Hello Python programmers. In this video we will discuss connecting to a SQL Server database and retrieving some information and also connecting to an Excel file which is kind of a database and retrieving some information. In order to do what we need to do you should install PYODBC using pip. We did this in class Remember, you bring up a command line to do this. You don't do it from Eclipse or from Python. You can do it from Python, we just didn't do it that way. And if you have a problem doing this, you need to do a little research and determine exactly what needs to be fixed. It should be pretty straightforward and it should be the one command that's indicated on this slide. But in case there is an issue, Try your best to solve it, and then if you have no other recourse, let me know and perhaps I can help you, but I can't support individual machines across all my classes, so try to do the best you can to figure that out. ODBC stands for Open Database Connectivity. It's a protocol invented by Microsoft, I believe, and now it's an open published standard and PYODBC implements that protocol in a form of Python libraries so you can write code to access databases that also speak ODBC and of course SQL Server does and that makes our life pretty easy. In order to do the demos that I'm going to show you today plus some homework that's coming down the road you will need to run the VPN if you're off campus and the VPN is free you go to the UC library website I provided a link here you can install it and you can activate it on your local machine that makes you part of the UC network as long as the VPN is running my VPN is running The SQL Server we will be using is maintained by me on the UC Claremont campus, but it is part of the UC network. As long as you're on the VPN or on any of the campuses, you should be fine. I've tried it on Maine. I've tried it across the VPN. I've tried it at Blue Ash. I've tried it at Claremont. It works fine. One of the databases we'll be accessing is one that I created for this class. The screen snip here is SSMS. You don't need to use SSMS in this class to do the homework. I'm just giving you some background so you can see what we're up to. I have a table called American Athletic Conference, which is the conference that UC is in for their teams. I populated it with some data and I wrote a query where I just selected the top 1000 rows. And you can see there are 12 rows in the table and we will submit a query from a Python program to extract similar information from this database. If you'd like to use SSMS and log on with the credentials that I'm going to provide in a moment, feel free to do that. And you have limited capabilities, but you're certainly able to look at the IS4010 database plus another database that we're about to see as well. The connection string we will use is provided by me. You don't have to worry about determining or deriving or researching connection strings. If you'd like to know more, there is a plethora of information available online. One thing I always say about connection strings is that I highly encourage you to ask someone for a connection string. If you're at work, if you're trying to get a job done, start a new project, find out what the connection string is. It's much less effort than trying to determine it on your own. There are numerous settings and configuration considerations, security considerations, remote access, local access, and you just don't know what might be necessary. Again, I know that we like to solve our own problems and we want to look like we're self-sufficient and capable. 
the connection string harbor is one of those times where it's okay and reasonable and prudent to ask someone else to give you a working connection string rather than trying to figure it out. This is what we will use until I tell you otherwise. I gave you the host name and the server name. I gave you the database name, which we saw a moment ago in SSMS, and the credentials are provided there as well. The credentials won't change throughout the semester. You can use those to log in through SSMS. You can use those to write Python code to connect to that database server when it's necessary. Our strategy will be to write a query and submit it to the SQL Server instance. That will return a result set and then we process the result set in our program. It's very easy to get connected as long as the connection string is correct. It's three lines of code plus an import statement. It's almost too easy to get off the ground. It seems too good to be true, but it works. Here's a complete program. We define the connection string. We establish a connection. We create a cursor object. And then the cursor object has an execute method. The execute method sends a query to the database engine. The database engine returns something in that cursor object. And then we process that returned something as a set of rows. We can grab this entire bit of code right off the slide. And I have created a project in Eclipse. Hopefully you will follow along and do the same thing. I call the project in class underscore 2020 underscore 03 underscore 26. And I pasted in all of that code right off of the slide. When the VPN is up, this should work. I don't see any syntax errors. It looks like the paste is successful. I will attempt to run this. There's my results. It looks reasonable. I see what appears to be data from that table that I showed you earlier. And it didn't take very long at all. This code provides a good template for stepping through the result set returned by SQL Server. I just use the word row and I use a for loop. So the cursor object contains a set of what I will call rows and those rows are indexed. I can print by new by number of the index a particular column and I see a typo here. That's actually the fourth column. And I can also do math. You'll notice in line 30, I can use a row and an index to grab a column out of the result set, convert it to an integer, and add it to a running sum. So fall back on this as a quick example of connecting to a database, submitting a query, and processing the result set in a simple way. Hang on to that. You will probably need that down the road for future assignments or for your final project. This slide illustrates a slightly better SQL syntax. And I'm just talking about the style and design strategies here, not necessarily Python issues. If you look at the code that we wrote a moment ago, we did a select star, which is generally in an academic environment, not a bad idea, no big deal. You get all of the columns, but in the real world, 
It's a very bad idea. We want to specify column names. And we're opening ourselves up for all kinds of security issues if we just blindly write select star because we want more than a couple columns. A much better strategy then is to name specifically the column names that I want to retrieve from that table. It cuts down on the through on the bandwidth that I'm consuming and it also gives me a little bit more security because I'm not asking for some columns that may be sensitive data or things that I might not want to have available in my result set. Once we've got good at this, we can actually start doing list comprehension on the information returned from SQL Server. So if you'll notice what I've got highlighted here in yellow, I've got something called my row, which I made up on the fly. And I've got something called cursor, which we saw earlier. The cursor object, which contains the result set from the query, supports a method called fetch all, which returns all the rows in the result set. Keep in mind, this is assuming the result set is relatively small. We don't want to do anything uh, overwhelming here because we are storing things in memory. But once I've got that fetch all method figured out, I can write list comprehension logic to process the entire result set in one line of code. Another powerful thing that we're doing here is referencing the column names by column names rather than indices. I could literally type my row dot university knowing that university is one of the columns in the results set. And I have found through experience that these column names are case sensitive even though as you probably realize in my in SQL Server uh, column names are not case sensitive. So it's a little bit of a different mapping once you get into Python since this is a member of the row and Python is case sensitive, then you'd better spell it in a case sensitive manner. Now, what does this line do? Well, after it executes the fetch all and returns all of the rows and executes list comprehension on those rows, all of our results now live in a list called universities and we can do nifty things with that list. So keep that in mind for future assignments too. You can write one line of code to process all of the rows in the result set into a list and then process the list. In the second example, we have to kind of start over because we did our fetch all and if we want to traverse those rows again we've got to execute the query again to reinitialize the result set and then execute fetch all a second time again a mistake that I've made in the past be careful is that once you've executed the fetch all in the list comprehension statement you can't do it again until you execute the cursor again and you'll realize that because the second time you attempt to process the fetch all, it will have no rows in it and you will get no results. So your mistake will become obvious at that point. In this example, we're doing list comprehension again. We're processing the enrollment column for each row in the results set. And then we're executing a sum on the list that we generated and storing that in total enrollment. And you can see then that we can do list comprehension and then execute the sum function to sum all the values in that list. Let's grab this code. This is an entire standalone program. We can just go back to Eclipse, create another module, new module, I'll just call that connect to paste it in and then execute it 
It goes through the entire process again, establishes a connection with the database, submits a query, performs list comprehension on the query, prints out the list called universities, and there is the list. And we can see in that list that we have extracted the university column for all of the rows in the results set and stored all those universities in a list. And then in line 17, we can just print the list and we get the entire contents of the list. In the second example, we just get a number, 369362, which is the sum of the enrollment values for all the rows in the result set. Again, using list comprehension, coupled with the sum function across the entire list. Good, so we've seen how to do list comprehension on the result set returned by executing a query. And the trick is the fetch all method that is a member of the cursor class. Actually, the connection class, to be more specific. I'm calling it a cursor. Here's some access to more data. I have a database called Grocery Store Simulator. It's got about 10 gigabytes of data. Most of it is transaction data, purchases by customers in grocery stores. You are welcome to explore that database and write queries against it and write Python code against it. If you get too off in the weeds, and you try to do too much with transaction detail and transaction uh, tables. As I said, with 10 gigabytes of data, you may find yourself timing out once in a while. So be careful with the queries that you write, but you can't hurt anything. You can just cause a little bit of time waste. Anyway, feel free to log in with SSMS or to write Python code and investigate what you can do with the grocery store simulator database. You should have no problem determining the structure of this database because the foreign keys have the same name as the corresponding primary keys. If you study a couple of tables, you'll see it right away. The tables are named in a consistent manner. The primary keys, the foreign keys are named in a consistent manner. And you should have no problem exploring what I've got there. If you like to write views, feel free. You may not be able to save them, but at least you can grab the SQL generated by the view and then drop that into your Python code. If you're a really good SQL writer, you don't need the view designer, that's great. If you use the view designer to write some simple SQL statements, that's great too. Here's a SQL statement that joins two tables. If you study this, you'll get a feel for the structure of all the tables. As I said, the primary key in one table will have the identical name as the corresponding foreign key in another table. So I think the schema of the grocery store database simulator is intuitive, and I encourage you to take some time to look at it. Our next topic is extracting information from an Excel worksheet. I provided some working code here and I provided an Excel worksheet for you to process as well. The, the worksheet is called empl.xlsx. It's very simple. It just contains a couple of columns and a few rows. And this code requires you to import open PYXL, again, use pip and load open PYXL into your Python environment on your workstation. 
and then that line of code that I've got highlighted will bring in the libraries that you need to use. So the first thing we do is call load workbook and load workbook drags in the contents of an Excel spreadsheet. The second thing we do is reference the sheet by name. Remember the default name for worksheets is sheet one, sheet two, sheet three as you create them in Excel. The first sheet in this workbook, I left the default name sheet one. The next thing we do is access the individual cells by the row and column references, which is very convenient because since we all know how to use Excel, we know what A1 means. And all we need to do is gain a little bit of understanding about the spreadsheet by studying it in Excel. And then we can access the individual cells of the sheet by the row and column reference. Very convenient. I'll leave it up to you to try this program and experiment with it so you can get some comfort level. I created some more data for you by executing a query, which I provided here. I created that query in the view designer in SSMS and I translated it to this slide. And all it does is compute the total transactions for each store in the grocery store simulator database and then grab the top five of those. And that's an interesting bit of information. You can see which stores have had the most transactions over whatever period of time the database stores, which actually is about, I believe, two weeks of running flat out. And then I shut the simulator down because it had generated 10 gigabytes of data and that was enough. Over that period of time, those five stores generated the most transactions through the simulator. Another neat thing we can do with OpenPY Excel is create charts. Here is a working program to read a spreadsheet and create a pie chart. So I encourage you to study this because it actually ends up being the crux of your next assignment that you can access in the LMS when you're done with this uh, lecture. And I would encourage you to take this little snippet of code, which does work, and begin to modify it to achieve the assignment. So study this code, study the assignment that you've been given, modify this code to meet the requirements of the assignment, and it should not take you very much time to do that. If you have any questions, please post them on the discussion board in the LMS or email me, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you.